welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video will be on obstetrics physical examination. So first we start off with a general examination and for example like cardiovascular examination. So routine auscultation for the maternal heart is not needed if the woman does not have any symptoms and there is also no cardiac history. At the end of first trimester, 80% of the pregnant woman there will be floor murmur heard. And the indications to examine the cardiovascular system during pregnancy is if the woman comes from a rheumatic heart disease prevalent area or she had a known history of heart murmur or any heart disease, then we will have to do a cardiovascular examination for the mother. Next is breast examination. So formal breast examination is not necessary. Self-examination is as reliable as a general physician examination in detecting for breast lumps. So if they detect any suspicious lump that develop, they should be encouraged to report those lumps. And full investigation should not be delayed. The risk of a lump being cancer in around 40 years old is around 5%. And late-stage diagnosis is more common in pregnancy because of delayed referral and also investigation. Next off is the main topic for this presentation, which is the exam examination of the abdomen. So first, to examine the abdomen of a pregnant woman, place, the, place her in a semi-recumbent position on a couch or bed, make sure that she is comfortable, and if possible, cover the woman's legs with the bed sheet so that they feel more comfortable. If the examiner is a male, then he will need a chaperone. And before starting to examine the abdomen, make sure to ask whether there is any area of tenderness, area of pain. Ask the patient whether there is any pain. So first, introduce yourself. Position the patient and ensure adequate exposure. So the adequate exposure, the ideal exposure would be from the nipple line to the mid-thigh. However, for patient's modesty, we will just expose from the CV sternum to the upper border of the pubic symphysis. So on inspection, assess the shape of the uterus and note whether there is any asymmetry. Look for fetal movements. Also look for scars. And take note that women often forget to mention previous surgical procedures if they were performed long ago. And the common areas to find scars, we have to know which are the suprapubic area. Look for scars of caesarean section or scars of laparotomy for ectopic pregnancy or ovarian mass. There might be scar at the sub-umbilical area suggesting laparoscopy, right iliac fossa scar suggesting appendicectomy done before, and also right upper quadrant scar such as cholecystectomy. Also take note see whether there is any presence of trigravidarum or linea nigra. Linea nigra is the faint brown line running from the umbilicus to the symphysis pubis. And shown in this picture here, the trigravidarum and linea nigra. So we can present our inspection findings by saying the abdomen is distended with a gravid uterus, which is evidenced by the presence of linea nigra and trigravidarum. If there is no scar, we say there is no surgical scar, if there is scar, for example, a previous lower, scissor, lower segment caesarean section scar, we have to check the scar tenderness. And also say if the fetal movement is seen or absent. Next, we'll move to palpation of the abdomen. So first, we'll palpate for the clinical fundal height. So we can use the border of the index finger of our hand or use the ulna border of the hand, as shown in the picture here. This this step is to determine the level of the fundus of the uterus. So if you look at this picture, the area around the umbilicus would be around 20 to 22 weeks of gestation estimated and it is calculated by increasing 4 weeks, 4 weeks above. Increase to 24 weeks, 28 weeks, 32 and 36 weeks at the area around the CV sternum. So this is how we estimate the period, the gestation week of the fetus. And remember that it is, this clinical fundal height is set using even numbers and the unit will be weeks of gestational age. 
Whereas next is the symphysio funder height measurement. We fill for the top of the funders, and next fill for the upper border of the symphysis pubis. Then we will place the measuring tab on the symphysis pubis with the centimeter marks facing downwards to prevent bias of the measurement and then measure to the previously noted top of the funders shown in this picture here. The two areas shows the top of funders and the upper border of the symphysis pubis. So after measuring, we can turn the measuring tab over and read the measurement. So this symphysio funder height is the unit will be centimeters. So how high is the height? How many centimeters? Compared to the week of gestation. So a difference which is 3 cm or more, will be significant. So if the symphysio funder height is 3 cm or more than the gestational weight, there will be large as large symphysio funder height and vice versa for small symphysio funder height. And there will be different causes for larger than date babies and smaller than date babies. So the causes of larger than date will be, for example, macrosomia, also known as big baby, or multiple pregnancy where there are twins or triplets or more and also polyhydramnios where there is excessive amount of amniotic fluid whereas the causes of small for age babies would be fetal growth restriction can be due to various causes or can be due to oligohydramnios where there is reduced amount of amniotic fluid next for palpation we can do lateral grip lateral grip fundal grip and also pelvic grip So in this lateral grip, you can feel for the fetal back and the fetal parts. So in this picture, a smooth fetal back will be felt on the maternal right side, whereas there will be irregular fetal parts felt on the maternal left side. And next is fundal grip, where the pulp of the fingers are used to palpate for the fetal pole. After fundal grip, it will be pelvic grip. This is to palpate for the head and the buttock of the fetus. So Two hands will do the pelvic grip. And to palpate for the head, the head will be hard, globular in shape, and head will be palatable. Whereas for buttock, it will be soft or firm, broad, irregular, and non palatable This is to differentiate whether it is cephalic presentation or bridge presentation. So take note, on palpation, we can calculate the fetal pulse. If there is one or two fetal pulse, it is likely to be a single-tone pregnancy. If three or four poles, it suggests towards twin pregnancy. So fetal lie is either longitudinal, oblique, or transverse. A normal lie would be longitudinal lie. Next, fetal presentation, whether it is cephalic or bridge, after palpating the abdomen. Engagement, if we can feel the whole fetal head above the pubic symphysis and it is fully mobile, we can say it as 5 fifth palpable. If the head is engaged and not mobile, then it is either 1 fifth or 2 fifth palpable. Shown in this picture over here, you can see the 5 fifth, 4 fifth, 3 fifth, 2 fifth, and 1 fifth palpable. And also state the relative amount of like her volume, whether it is clinically adequate or not. <laughs> so, next, after palpation, we can do auscultation to listen for the fetal heart sound. The fetal heart sound can be listened by using an ordinary stethoscope or peanut stethoscope. And if it is not clearly heard, we can move to using the handheld Doppler device, also known as the Dapton. So this is where we can auscultate for the fetal heart sound, shown in the picture here. So for the summary of palpation and auscultation, this is how we can present our findings. So this is an example where we can say on abdominal examination, the clinical fundal height is 32 weeks size, symphysial fundal height is 30 cm, which corresponds to the weeks of period of gestic period of amenorrhea. There is a single turn fetus, longitudinal lie, cephalic presentation. The fetal back is on the maternal right side with head engagement 5 fifth palpable. Lycra is clinically adequate Estimated fetal weight around 2.6 to 3 kg. And the fetal heart rate is 140 beats per minute, which is strong and regular. 
So next, other than abdominal examination, pelvic examination is not routinely done and it is only done if necessary. So pelvic examination consists of speculum examination, which could be done in cases like bleeding per vagina or leaking lyco. And another examination will be bimenal examination, done in cases of labor pain or induction of labor. So that's all for the physical examination for obstetrics. Thank you.